I'm Deborah Curtin, the founder of New England Primate Conservancy. Get ready to be wowed as I introduce you to the extraordinary monkeys of Asia. Asia's monkeys include some of the most uniquely beautiful species that you've ever laid eyes on. They also include some of the most fragile monkey populations, as well as some of the most adaptable monkeys on Earth. Even among the adaptable species, most are endangered. In all cases, their physical and behavioral adaptations benefit their habitats just as much as their habitats nurture them. This is the beauty and interdependence of biodiversity. The monkeys are critical to the health of their ecosystems. There are roughly 75 Asian monkey species with about 63 subspecies. They're categorized into two major groupings, the colobines or leaf-eating monkeys and the macaques. The colobines are found in a variety of habitats from tropical and subtropical forests to swamp forests and coastlines to chilly mountainous landscapes. Their diversity ranges within roughly 55 species that are distinguished within the seven genera represented here. Not all macaque species are the same. They live in vast geographic ranges from seasonally snowy mountains to semi-arid deserts. Macaques are the most widely distributed of all primate species with the exception of humans. These are just seven of the 24 macaque species. One macaque species, the Barbary macaque, resides outside of Asia and will not be featured in this episode, but you can learn about them in our episode about African monkeys and we'll add the link below. You can see the differences between colobines and macaques, but let's look first at the characteristics they share in common. All Asian monkeys are diurnal, that means that they're awake and active during daylight hours, and all are quadrupedal, traveling and moving about on all four limbs. All primates have a high level of intelligence. They're curious and clever. Monkeys carefully observe and assess their world, making decisions based on the objects and events around them. Asia's monkeys live in extended family groups, referred to as troops, of varying sizes depending upon food availability and habitat stability. Within these troops, there are friendships, alliances, and adversaries. There are hierarchies and strict social codes. Defying those codes reaps punishment. Everybody knows their place. Grooming is an important activity. The monkeys not only groom themselves regularly, they groom each other to get to those hard to reach areas. Allo grooming, or grooming your friend or colleague, not only serves to rid them of parasites and potential disease-carrying biting insects, but it also serves as important social bonding. It's an intimate activity that expresses trust. It's relaxing and almost meditative. Not only do Asia's monkeys have strong relationships within their troops, but they develop relationships with other species as well. As these gray langurs leap into a tree to forage, Deer follow for any morsels that the langurs drop or toss their way. This provides animals that can climb with nutritious foods to which they wouldn't otherwise have access. Trust bonds develop, and the rewards are mutually reciprocated. Food is a strong motivator, even when the suppliers might be a little bold and potentially annoying. These deer patiently allow young macaques to hitch a ride. All Asian monkeys, like all monkeys, have tails. Tail length is largely determined by lifestyle. Most colobines are primarily arboreal, which accounts for their long tails that assist them in balance and assist their acrobatic leaps from tree branch to tree branch. Macaques' tail length vary. Tail lengths have been related to climate and to whether they spend most of their time on the ground or in trees. Those who live primarily on the ground, like the crested black macaque in the center photo, don't need the assistance of tails for balance. Those who live in cold climates, like the Japanese macaque in the upper right, might have shorter tails because long tails can be vulnerable to frostbite. Tails have other benefits too. You can be sure that they're fair game during play, especially among youngsters, and they're great tools for controlling wayward toddlers. Beneath those very important tails, Asia's monkeys have sitting pads called ischial callosities. Monkeys spend a lot of time sitting on hard surfaces like tree branches, rocks, and even man-made walls. Here's a glimpse of the callosities on a dusky langur. These sitting pads provide a measure of comfort and balance. 
Many of Asia's monkeys live within or close to human settlements and infrastructure. Where there are humans, there's food. The availability of easy handouts emboldens any species. Gray langurs are revered in some traditions and find treats near an urban temple or from friendly human primates who respect and honor the monkeys. Some monkeys become wily thieves and are resented as pests. You can be fairly certain that this guy stole this bottle of water. He knows exactly what he's doing with that bottle cap, so this is not his first venture into crime. However, crime doesn't pay. Food theft results in potential human-wildlife conflicts in which the monkeys are frequently on the losing end. Urban areas provide other benefits too, like water features to take a dip and cool off on a hot day, or cool objects to rest on while assessing one's surroundings. There are considerable risks associated with human infrastructure too. Cities are fraught with hazards. Monkey electrocution and road kills are big problems. Monkeys, of course, climb and prefer to travel above the urban chaos. Electric poles and cables offer above-ground passage, but at great risk, especially in regions in which electric lines are not insulated. The monkeys are smart, but it's not in their DNA to know the difference between insulated and uninsulated electric cables. Alternately, when they venture to travel across parts of their habitat that are now intersected by roads, they face other hazards. Monkey road kills are common. Now let's look at some differences between colubines and macaques. One shared characteristic that identifies leaf-eating monkeys, which are colubines, is their complex multi-chambered or sacculated stomachs that break down tough plant fibers like cellulose and degrade bacteria. Their stomachs contain an array of microflora that are needed to process and ferment plant material. Macaques do not share this adaptation. Colubine digestion actually begins with the chemical composition of the enzymes in their saliva. These leaf-eating monkeys tend to spend a great deal of time at rest. Because their diet is so low in nutrition, they have to eat a lot. Digesting these tough leaves, plant parts, and unripe fruits is an energy-sapping process. The advantage of their complex digestive systems is that they can consume and process plant parts that are undesirable and indeed undigestible to many other animals. This reduces competition for food sources. It's mother nature's way of ensuring that there's enough food for everybody. As mentioned earlier, the colubines are primarily arboreal. In the spirit of exceptions to every rule, which we've talked about in other episodes, gray langurs spend a good deal of time on the ground but they're equally comfortable climbing whether trees or man-made structures. Something else worth mentioning at this juncture, unlike their African counterparts who are almost absent thumbs, Asian colubines have thumbs. They're shorter than the thumbs of other primates, which facilitates their arboreal acrobatics, but it's longer than the thumbs of their African counterparts. The colubines are divided into two categories, the langurs, lutungs, and cerulees, and the odd-nosed monkeys. Common names can get a little confusing at this point because some of the odd-nosed monkeys are called langurs. So let's look at the species in the langur, lutung, and cerulee category. We'll call the Presbytus genus cerulees, although some of their common names may be langur, lutung, and leaf monkey. And they differ from the other langurs by the shape of their heads, particularly the poorly developed brow ridges and prominent nasal bones. Gray langurs are large, hardy monkeys native to the Indian subcontinent. Most live at lower altitudes, and some live in the foothills of the Himalayas. The time they spend on the ground and in trees is pretty equally distributed, as we've discussed. They have quite a broad, mostly vegetarian diet that includes leaves, flowers, seeds, fruits, tree bark, ferns, and sometimes invertebrates. We'll call the Trachopithecus genus Lutungs. Again, you can see that their common names include langurs, lutungs, and leaf monkeys. Their diet includes leaves, flowers, fruits, seeds, and the occasional insect. Unique to the lutungs in the Trachopithecus genus, babies are born bright golden orange. There are a few theories about this. The popular theory is that since they live in dense forests and the whole troop looks after the babies, the bright color enables everyone to know where the infants are at all times. 
Within a couple of months, the infant's color changes in stages, as seen here, until he or she is the color of the mother. The odd-nosed monkey group represents the other Asian colobine category. Look at the photos. I don't have to tell you why they're called odd-nosed. Duke Langers are stunning. They're considered by some, including myself, to be among the most beautiful monkeys because of their striking features and coloration. They're sometimes referred to as costumed monkeys because they appear to be made up and clothed for a theatrical production. The three species are differentiated by the color of their shanks or lower legs. The pigtailed snub-nosed monkey is named for its short tail and short upward pointed nose. Once again, in the spirit of exceptions to every rule, here's the one colobine monkey with a relatively short tail. Its so-called pigtail is only about six inches in length, which is 14 to 15 centimeters. Besides being unusually short, the tail is hairless except for a few strands at the tip. Unfortunately, few photos are available of the pigtailed langurs. The best we could do here is to provide a not great view of a baby's hairless tail. Proboscis monkeys are a fan favorite. I don't have to say anything about why they're in the odd-nosed monkey group. Famously known for the male's long and pendulous nose, which amplifies their honking calls, females have much smaller noses, but even they are oddly shaped. That's not their only wacky physical adaptation. Living along rivers and mangroves, proboscis monkeys are expert swimmers. Nature outfitted them with webbing on some of their fingers and toes. If an air or land predator becomes a threat, a quick dive into the water below makes for an easy escape. The snub-nosed monkeys, named for their flat upturned noses with wide forward-facing nostrils, they inhabit mountain forests up to elevations of more than 13,000 feet, 4,000 meters. It's theorized that this navel structure evolved to prevent frostbite during long cold winters. Their long, dense hair keeps them warm during fierce winter storms. Macaques are the most widely distributed of all primate species except humans. They're highly adaptable to a wide range of habitats and climates, tolerating greater fluctuations in temperature and living in varying landscapes and settings. Unlike the leaf specializing colobines, macaques will eat just about anything, which is one of the keys to their adaptability and success. They have a special adaptation for this purpose as well, and it's not shared by the colobines. Cheek pouches are an adaptation for when someone needs to eat and run. The pouches are situated inside the cheeks and expand down into the throat area. They can be stuffed full with food, and they can expand to the size of the monkey's stomachs. If a monkey is interrupted while foraging, say by a predator or a competitor who wants their foraging spot, she can escape with a fee safely stored away to enjoy later in an undisturbed location. Most macaque species have expressive faces. Crested black macaques have some pretty dramatic facial expressions. Like all primates, including humans, they use facial expressions to communicate their feelings. We talked about the colobine monkeys being arboreal, with some spending time on the ground. Macaques have the best of all worlds, dividing their time between trees and ground depending upon their needs, desires, and location characteristics. Macaques are able climbers, leapers, and swimmers in all environments. Some of their acrobatic antics might remind you of superheroes. Macaques are adept in all situations and adapt to whatever their surroundings provide. It's worth mentioning that, despite their extreme adaptability, most macaque species are endangered due to the hazards of human activities. Asia's monkeys are extraordinary. Each diverse species is intelligent and complex with rich social and emotional lives, each with unique biological adaptations that benefit their ecosystems. They're critical to the maintenance and growth of their habitats, as those habitats are critical to their survival. We've introduced you to a few of the monkeys of Asia, and there's so much more to discover. You can learn about Asia's monkeys on the New England Primate Conservancy website. From the main menu, click on Primate Profiles. There you'll find a listing of the monkeys of Asia. Click on any one to learn much more about them, where they live, how they live, how they communicate, what they eat, what threatens their futures, what, if anything, is being done to protect them, and much more.
Thanks for watching. Please click the thumbs up icon below and subscribe so that you'll know when there are more videos available. We hope to see you again soon.